What's up? It's T-Roy from T-Roy Self-Help. Um, I want to talk today about uh, confidence. <clears throat> I want to talk about what confidence actually is and where it comes from. So if we think about like confidence, what is, uh, how do you actually get confident at doing something? Well, the conventional wisdom would tell you that you need to do that thing over and over and over again so that you get confident at it. Like for example, if I'm not, if I'm not good at golf, I'm not gonna be confident when I walk up to take my first swing in on a golf course. But if I practice it over and over and over again and I get better at it, then the next the next time I step up to play my next round of golf, um, I'll be more confident because I, I know that I can actually do it. There's like that solidified like knowing, that, that knowledge that I can actually play golf. So when you think about like social confidence, how do you get social confidence? Well, if you put yourself in social situations over and over and over and over again, then you should end up being really confident at it, right? Well, I, I find that there's actually another layer to this. Um, there's actually, if, if you grew up as like a really unconfident person and you have a lot of like social anxiety, there's actually another layer that you should be digging for inside of you, if that makes sense. Um, other than just like knowing how to socialize. Knowing how to socialize is really important. And I think that, you know, to gain social confidence, you do have to put yourself in a lot of social situations. But the other layer that I've actually been looking at more recently that's helped me a lot is the layer, uh, like basically, it involves like asking yourself why you're not confident in the first place. Well, I think it's actually a lot more simple than you might think. If you look back to your earliest memory when you didn't feel confident in a social situation or you didn't feel significant or the first time where you felt like you, you couldn't speak because somebody was telling you not to, um, a lot of times you can identify those things and you can, you can dig down and just find out where your lack of confidence actually comes from. My guess is at some point in your life, I mean, this is this is how it is for me, um, and for a lot of people in our society, they n nobody like starts out their life not being confident. Like everybody's everybody's confident when they're born. Like when you're born, you, when you see like a, a kid going around, like tr like kids try everything, but then at some point they learn from their mistakes, right? Or somebody warns them about doing something, which might be okay. I think learning from your mistakes is um, probably the best thing that you can do to keep yourself safe, and also, you know, trusting adults when they when they tell you that that thing that you're trying might kill you. I mean, obviously, you don't want to do that. But I think a lot of times, our parents, our teachers, our peers try to make us uh, sort of like conform to their ways. I mean, I don't want to make this like into like a conspiracy thing or anything but I just want to identify where this lack of confidence and the social anxiety can come from or this lack of confidence in social situations so when you're growing up you know your parents or peers or whatever you know teachers can basically when you try to express yourself um, a lot of times they'll say like okay don't do that like sit down shut up uh, behave so if they do that over and over and over again every time you try to express yourself and every time you try to speak up if every time you try to speak up you're told to shut up what's gonna happen well you're gonna learn not to speak you're gonna learn to not trust what you have to say because those people that are telling you to sit down and shut up are making you feel not very worthy to speak right so, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's where it comes from. So how do we undo that? Well, I think there's two things that you need to do personally. And this has kind of worked for me. Uh, one, 
I think you need to realize that all of those, all of those like self-doubt thoughts, all of those thoughts that are telling you that you can't do this or you can't do that, basically all those thoughts are not yours. Those have been put into your head at some point in your life and then you keep repeating them to yourself every time you're in a situation that requires confidence but you can't feel confident because people have told you not to be confident in what you're saying. So for example, if you have like really bad social anxiety and you can't like speak up or you're one of those like quiet people who you maybe you want to say something in a conversation but you just can't, like it won't physically come out. Well, a lot of times there's like you want to say something but then those thoughts are like telling you not to. I think the first step, so to reiterate here, the, the first step is recognizing that those thoughts are not yours. Like no, nobody starts out just doubting themselves or self-criticizing <laughs> or feeling unworthy. That's That happens to you. And then it carries on and it manifests in all of those situations where you're supposed to feel confident in social situations because your brain literally thinks like, okay, well, I've made it this far thinking this way, so it must be a good thing. That's why those thoughts stay with you. That's why, that's why those, that's why that self doubt, that self doubt stays with you because your brain thinks of those thoughts as an asset. The second thing that I think you need to do is prove to yourself that you can actually speak up in social situations, that it's fine, that <laughs> you need to learn to trust yourself. Um, because it's likely that if you're not very confident in social situations, that you don't really, you've never really experienced, you know, speaking up a lot, or you've never really experienced, um, you know, being extremely confident, fully expressing yourself in social situations. So you kind of need to force yourself to do that. Uh, one way to do that, one way to start out is literally just become a more social person. Every time you see somebody during the day, say hi to them, greet them, ask them how they are. When you're with your friends, force yourself, if you have a thought, like say you have a big group of friends and you're usually nervous around large groups of people. I, I mean, I used to be this way. I used to like hang out with even, even my friends, like my friends, the people who I hung out with in college, I was not very confident around them. And I, I often felt self-conscious, like my, like what I was saying wasn't worthy to be said. So I started doing this, I had this, I started to cultivate this habit where every time I would have a thought like that, I would instantly say it. And I wouldn't even give my brain time to come up with those self-defeating thoughts that would stop me from talking. So I became more talkative and I became more myself. I became more expressive. So that's, that's the second thing that you need to do, is actually prove to your brain that you can speak up, you can express yourself, you can talk, you can be confident, you can be confident, although the confidence will come with time. It will come with you actually making yourself do that over and over and over again, you know, talking over and over and over again. So it, it might feel like awkward at first, but embrace that, embrace the awkwardness. You need to let go of your ego and just accept the fact that, okay, maybe you don't really have the best social skills, but so what, nobody's perfect. It's, I heard this quote one time, um, and the quote is, your brain wants proof, not promises. So what that means is you can't really think your way to social confidence. You can't just be like, oh, like, oh, I realize now that I have social confidence or, or you know, you can't like meditate and just like get rid of all this, um, all this trauma <laughs> or all these self-defeating thoughts. You, you have to actually take action and prove to your brain that it's going to be okay if you talk, you know, if you socialize with people, you have to prove to your brain that that's okay. You can't just promise your brain like, oh, it's okay. Like say, you know, for the last month you've been sitting at home for like every single day. You haven't been going out. You haven't been talking to anybody. And all of a sudden you want to go to a party. 
You can't just tell your brain over and over again, like, I promise it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be okay, brain. You're still probably gonna get nervous. So what you have to do is you actually have to face that nervousness, you have to face that fear, take action, put yourself in that, in that social situation. In this case, you have to put yourself in that party and start talking to people and prove to your brain that you're going to be fine if you, if you socialize with people and if you speak up and if you express yourself. You know, if you make jokes and have fun, like that's okay to do that. You have to prove to your brain that that's okay. And then after you do that, after you walk out of that party or after you walk out of that first social situation, look at your hands and just acknowledge like, I'm still here. I didn't blow up, I didn't die. Nothing bad happened. I'm fine. Everything's good. Okay, so to summarize this video, what I talked about was where that lack of confidence comes from, where uh, self-doubt comes from, where it originates, uh, the fact that you need to acknowledge it, and then uh, what, you, what actions you need to take to make yourself become more confident in social situations or help yourself become more confident in social situations would be a better way to put it. So that's basically what I talked about in this video. So what do you actually need to do in these social situations when these self-defeating thoughts come up? Like, so let's say you, you go to a party with a lot of people in it and you know, you start talking to a group of people and you know, you have thoughts to say, but then all of a sudden that feeling comes up. Well, if you're, if you're at a point where you're, where you try to talk and it's just literally like a feeling that's blocking you from talking, what you need to do is you need to accept that feeling. You need to accept all of the, all of the discomfort and the awkwardness and literally just say, like focus on what you're trying to say and say it. If you're at a point where you can identify the thoughts that are creating that feeling, like the actual self-doubt in your mind, if you can identify those thoughts, which you should do, you should try to recognize those, self de those self-defeating thoughts when they come up so that you can acknowledge them and then shift your focus away from them and focus on what you're actually saying. So when you're in conversation and you're trying to shift your focus away from those self-defeating thoughts, and to what you're actually doing, what you're actually saying, it's almost like you're working a muscle and you get better and better at it over time. Your focus gets better and your ability to just, you know, let those thoughts that you're trying to get out come out and, you know, let your words come out. That gets easier over time as you make yourself do it. But I think it, I think identifying those self-defeating thoughts and realizing that they're not actually yours, that they were just put in you at some point in your life is really important. So, yeah, this is the end of the video, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this video helps you become a more confident person, and I hope you learned something about where social you know fear and self doubt come from as far as you know as far as I know I mean these theories are basically theories that I've come up with myself by listening to other people, other confident people, and other people who have dealt with this stuff. I basically come up with these theories as a conglomeration of all these different thoughts from other people. So leave a comment if this video resonated with you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Peace. Always embrace the unknown. I think that planning too far ahead, planning what you're going to say, planning how an interaction is going to go, that's one of the worst things that you can do. Embrace uncertainty.